So hello, and welcome to a pretty secretive and exclusive location called Carlink. They are a dealer, a car dealer in the Netherlands, and uh, it just so happens that the owner of the place has uh, done Gumball 3000, and we've crossed paths quite a few times, and he said, you know what, we fancy drivers with cool cars, why don't you pop down? As it happens, it turns out that this is one of the most secretive dealerships slash collections that I think I've ever seen. Even though it's a dealership on the outside, it's just this black building, you would never know that it's here. So to be invited inside to show you around, and believe me, what's next door is ridiculous, is an honor. However, this is the lounge. This is where you walk in when you come to Carlink. Let me show you around. So it kind of reminds me, in a weird way, of NVN London, in that you've got this beautiful lounge which you can chill out in. But there's some significant things here. Take, for example, this amalgam model of this 458 Speciale Aperta. This exact car is next door. And then down here, we have this very exclusive box, which will give you a hint as to one of the other cars that this collector owns. This is the box that you get when you are rewarded an allocation on the Ford GT. They send you this spec kit with all the different samples of Alcantara and carbon and all the different paint samples, even little little examples of wheels so that you can mix and match and create your spec before signing off on it. And this box is carbon as well. Wonderful, wonderful thing. Got the TV going on. One of 25 edition 911. Uh, it turns out that the Dutch police used to use uh, 911 targets as their police cars. How crazy is that? And so this model and this box here came with that car. Now look, and up here there is something to commemorate the P1 GTR. This just so happens that this shelf is a massive hint of things to come. This speaker, this, this dog here, this bulldog is actually a speaker. So you mount your, your iPhone or iPad on top of there. And uh, yes, he plays tunes out of his sunglasses. Pretty cool stuff. And around here, nice fridge here. Oh, I like that. Car Link branded fridge. Pretty trick. Then around here, I guess, is the negotiating table. So this is basically where clients, potential customers, would come to hang out in the middle of buying their new cars. Speaking of which, let's have a look next door and see what kind of cars lie beyond. Oh, 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 oh. oh cri crikey. Right, we're going to have to prioritize things here. So welcome to the inner sanctum of Carlink. I'll show you what's behind my shoulders shortly. But first of all, let's start with the car in front of us. Uh, Bugatti Chiron, that needs very little introduction. Um, by the way, I'm gonna be doing videos with some very select and special cars in here, uh, including this Chiron and some other cars which are around that corner shortly. But so I'll give you a quick overview of this. I won't go into too much detail because there will be an in-depth video and, uh, well, a top speed run on the Autobahn <laughs> coming soon because we're not too far from Germany. But this is a familiar car to me and it might strangely be a familiar car to you because this accompanied me on the Gumball Rally this year, but only it was wrapped in a blue camouflage print. You might also know this car from Team Afrojack as a bit of a hint. But look at it, exposed green carbon rear here that flows through across the complete roof line and then it goes to a black contrasting section at the front which matches in to the rear C section and contrasts against green carbon again, which runs towards the back of the car. I love the distinct shapes and sculpture of this car. Look how tight this crease line is. And then it goes and flows seamlessly into a completely separate part of the car that manages to maintain that sweeping line. These guys do design and detail like nothing else. Look at it. What a machine. And then over from the Bugatti, uh, P1 <laughs> GTR, road legal. We'll cover that in a minute. I want to go and talk about this particular 488 Spider. Uh, reason being, it's about to roll out of here. So I'll cover it before it goes. Uh, this is, as far as we're aware, is quite likely to be the highest spec Ferrari 488 Spider in existence. Uh, there's over a hundred thousand pounds worth of optional extras on this car. Take for example this paint. I'm not sure if the camera's doing it justice. There you go, you can see it, the pearlescent shimmer there. And there's a triple layer pearlescent white paint called Bianco Liana. Very individual, very expensive paint and everything that you can see that is contrasting on the camera might look black is actually blue. For example this 
panel there. There you go. Blue carbon fiber against blue navy interior. And speaking of the interior, it's closer really to a Reva yacht than it is a car. Look at the wooden inlays on the finish there. I mean, this is really tailor-made stuff. It's so tailor-made that they've gone and tailor-made the tailor-made badge just to let you know how tailor-made this tailor-made car is. <laughs> so the wheels look black on the camera. If I get up close, they're actually deep navy blue. Silver painted brake calipers. All of this side sill here, that's all, you guessed it, blue carbon fiber. The details go on and on and on. Look down here as well, this contrast splitter. It's the pearlescent white on the outside going to exposed blue carbon fiber. Front facing camera, just sitting underneath the Cavallino badge there. We've got the adaptive headlights, which, which move in conjunction with the angle of the nose lift to make sure that your lights aren't pointing at the ceiling when you actuate it. And then inside, check out the kick sill. It's, which ironically is a sill you definitely don't want to kick because it's made of rare Italian wood. And they've also managed, and I don't know how they've done this, it must just be a super thin laminate. It is real wood, but they've managed to inlay it into the mat, the actual mat itself. Incredible stuff. Look at the piping. We've got this contrast white piping on the edge of these unique seats. White, prancing horse, cavallino, navy belts. Honestly, all of these, everything you're staring at is pretty much an optional extra. But I think that the standout thing is the control tunnel here, this control bridge, which is wrapped in the exposed wood and you can feel it. You can feel the grain in it. And it's just like the wood that you get on the back of a fancy yacht. See, it is stunning. So even on the dash here, what you would be forgiven for thinking is standard silver plastic feels like aluminium, not the standard plastic that you would get with the car that's tied in. Yes, it's cold to the touch. That is metal, not the standard plastic. And that continues on shift paddles on the side there. And of course, this is also a spider. So you can fully enjoy the view and the wind in your hair. Amazing thing. So what else do we have? Maybach, British Racing Green, Bentley Continental. Uh, this here is a one of six Ferrari Sergio. Uh, it was made to celebrate 100 years of pinning Farina. So this was a uh, factory commissioned and built project together with Pinin Farina, uh, making it one of the rarest Ferraris ever made. Uh, as I mentioned, just six cars. It has no roof at all. There's no insert for it. It is uh, always an open top car. It's based actually on a, a 458 Speciale. So the chassis itself and the drivetrain and handling is as good as the Speciale, but in a very unique body. I mean, look, look at these engine ports here, just round holes there. Unique diffuser and lights around. Everything on this car, including the wheels, is unique to the car. And I believe it also came with some bags. Look at that there. These are custom bags made specifically for the car. These are up in the multi-millions of pounds worth of collector's car. They were strictly buy invite only, of course, when they launched. And this is actually the first time that I've seen one in person. I've seen photos of them. But um, yeah, six Ferraris just doesn't do it justice how rare this car is. It's kind of quite a interesting. Look how deep that is. There's no glass here either between there. It's just purely open. Yeah, fascinating thing. Uh, I will actually be doing a video on driving this car soon. So stay tuned to the channel. If you're liking what you're seeing so far, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. There's some incredibly exciting content coming soon, including driving a great selection of these cars, including the Chiron and the P1 GTR and the Sergio and well, I tell you what, why don't we leave it to you after this tour to give me another car that I should drive out of this remarkable collection of cars. Interestingly, half of this is the owner's private collection and the other half is for sale. So this is the sort of for sale corner. Uh, I also believe the P1 GTR is also for sale and the Sergio on the quiet is for sale as well. So yes, uh, incredible collection of cars. I tell you what I will show you as well around the Maybach cab is this little VW, unassumingly tucked away in the back there. Um, this, I believe, is the owner of Carlink's 
first car, which is absolutely not for sale, and quite rightly so. I would love to own my first car still. Uh, AMG GT here. Um, what else do we have? Yes, now this, the spec on this piece of spider, a carbon overload, carbon everywhere. This here, nice uh, trim there. I love the painted stripe that follows its way down the S duct. You can actually see it continue on down towards the floor there, which is a great spec. But for me, it's the interior, this sort of chocolate shaded Alcantara with the matte black inserts against black leather central stripe line. It's gorgeous, look at this. What a stunning interior. Really, really fancy car, this. I'm just gonna open the door on this. Some luck it's open because the amount of carbon fiber it has in here. Look at this. And that heavy gloss on the carbon. And I've noticed over the last few years, the shapes and sculpture of the carbon that Ferrari are using in their cars has got a lot more flamboyant. Look at the shape on that. That looks like it could be out of some F1 tech. It's really deep and and curved. It's an amazing piece of carbon work and of course that's all one single piece and then you've got this contrast with a lovely chocolate coloured Alcantara door pull and then inside the carbon continues extended carbon fibre down the entire transmission tunnel here up to the control stalk which originated from Speciali and La Ferrari. It's now been continued on into the special edition versions of the 488 and the Pista and this Pista Spider and more carbon and carbon fiber driver zone which if you spec comes with basically full carbon wheel top and bottom shift lights uh, extended carbon paddles shift paddles and it around the instrument cluster there that's also trimmed with carbon so yes if I could say carbon anymore I would oh yes there we go that carbon kick sill there Oh look, and a more extended carbon there. There we are, more carbon on the air intakes. Yes, extremely heavily specced car. And then conveniently next to it, we have its elder brother, the uh, 458 Speciali Aperta. Now interestingly, the Aperta was a numbered car, limited to just uh, 499 cars, whereas the 488 Pista Spider uh, was just limited by production time. So we'll never know actually how many of these cars they will eventually make, whereas this car has been capped and, uh, well, the values haven't. They seem to be holding incredibly strong as a result. Look at this, if, if, if you look at the interior of these, they haven't really changed that much. There's definitely a lot more carbon work and redesign going on on the central tunnel. And if this is open, yeah, I can show you the difference in the curvature of the carbon going on the door inlay here. Much simpler compared with the Pista Spider. And we've got signatures down here from someone I don't know, but it looks really important. Look at this as well. I love these hand painted stripes on the steering wheel, which continue with the racing stripe theme on the outside of the car. Nice details. So let's continue on. And this is over to the area where the majority of the cars are for sale. A 992 here, Crayon Panamera Sport Turismo with a, looks like a, also a chocolate interior. That looks lovely, look at that. This is basically Porsche's RS6, isn't it? Such a complete car. And then plenty of Range Rovers over here. This is the like for sale side. Black 488 Spider, yellow contrast stitch, timeless style and a Nero black, flat black, not metallic black, 812 super fast. I love these things, look at this, the rear. The rear for me has always been the favorite angle of the 812, I think they got that so right. And it is black on black on black with black window tints. So this is proper stealth pack, amazing piece of kit. And then let's complete full circle and go over to the P1 GTR, which uh, I shall be driving soon. Uh, incredibly limited car, these. Um, I believe they only made 40 P1 GTRs, which were originally supposed to be track-only cars. And then a lovely company uh, near to Chichester in the UK called Lanzante decided to convert a few to road legal cars. Hence why it looks like that from the rear, but has one of those number plate things that you don't see too often on a car with a diffuser like that. I mean, take for example, these 
these trims here. So that is an air line that the race team would clip on, creates an air jack, lifts the car off the floor, allowing the team to swap the wheels easier. And then on the inside, you'll notice that there's not a conventional wheel, and there is indeed a racing wheel. I won't go into this car too much because I'm gonna take you guys along for a drive in this soon. Uh, fun fact, this car has never been driven by the owner and he's told me I can, I can just casually go and take it for a drive, which I'm not sure if I feel honored or scared about, <laughs> but it'll be amazing from my point of view, driving this car will complete the trio of P1 variants in terms of driving the road car, the GTR, and then later on Lanzante enhanced that platform even further and made a car called the P1 LM. They only made five of them and uh, they eventually went on to break the Nürburgring lap record. So here we are, this is Carlink. Uh, give them a follow. Uh, they do have an Instagram account. The interesting thing is cars like this and like this and like the Sergio, they pop up on occasion on their website for sale uh, because the owner is just so passionate about really fancy, posh, obscure and rare cars. So if you're interested in that thing, uh, please give them a, a follow. If not, just for a thank you for giving us access to this place. As far as I'm aware, no one has been given access to this yet to film. And uh, yeah, I'd really like to thank them. So check them out. Also, maybe next summer we can persuade them to get this out. Uh, if you've not seen a video of these before, this is like a sort of sub aqua jet ski airplane type of thing. It literally dives underwater and then, and then ejects itself out of the water, right up into thin air. So much so that you have to strap yourself into these bucket seats here and pilot it like a helicopter. So this literally dives underwater. It's an incredible thing. So hopefully we can bring you some content with this one day. Because I've seen videos, I've never been in one, but they look absolutely bonkers. So here we are, back in the lounge where we started. What an amazing place. It's kind of taking it out of me a bit. When I get so involved in cars, and I'm breaking down all of the specs and all of the layers of work which have gone into it. It sort of fries my brain somewhat. But um, this is just the beginning. This is the bit where I want your input as to the cars which I'm going to drive over the coming days. I'm out here for about four days, maybe five days if the cars require it. Um, there's, a, there's some obvious cars, aren't there, in there, which we definitely want to drive. Chiron being one of them, P1 GTRs being one of them. And uh, if I can, I'm going to push my luck for the Sergio. It's a one of six car, they're super collector's edition car, so I'm not sure if they'll want any miles putting on it, but if I can share it with you, that'd be incredible. But the important thing is, what other cars would you like to see me drive? Comments below, let me know. Um, be sure to give Carlink a follow. They've always got some amazing stock in and out, and uh, we'll be joining the owner and collector, Jerome, in his Chiron when we go for a drive in the next video. Very exciting stuff. Also on that video, we're gonna try and reach a stupidly high speed on, on the autobahn, if at all possible. As always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I shall see you next time. Ciao!